Hello, everyone. Welcome to a special edition of Future Cities Lab podcast. Today, we're going to be discussing Java. No, I'm not talking about coffee or the programming script. I'm talking about Indonesia. Java is the most populated island in this archipelago nation. Java, with over 140 million people, clustered on just 6% of the land area of Indonesia, represents a critical opportunity, a critical challenge for planners, designers, policymakers, the government, to rethink the way urbanization is occurring in this part of the world. Now, when geographer Terry McGee coined his term Desakota, he was actually inspired by the research he was doing in Indonesia, which unveiled a new form of urbanization, which was not necessarily following typical models associated with uh, a clear separation between the city and the countryside, as in, say, Europe or North America. So this Desakota form has continued to this day, uh, probably um, expanded and even become more complex as cities in Indonesia have grown far outside their original boundaries, expanding into the countryside. But today we're going to be discussing future scenarios for how Java could evolve in more resilient and sustainable uh, development trajectories in the next 50 years, actually, until 2070. Organization and okay. governance. Yeah, yeah. And regulation. Governance. governance included uh, agency and regulation. Governance. And what else? Infrastructure, organization and governance, economic cluster. And what else? Institution is here. So we're going to be talking with some of the participants of this charrette, some of whom have actually come all the way from Indonesia to join us here, and then also some people in Singapore who have participated here. And first we're going to be discussing this with the organizer of the charrette, Debasari Tunis. So um, Java is uh, what you describe as a wicked problem, uh, a problem that doesn't have clear uh, factors and it's not easily solvable in a, a short term or with the tools that people are familiar with using. Um, so what does that mean in the case of Java? What are some of the issues and challenges? So, well, definitely there is a big problem in Java or it has many, many problems. And it's very, very difficult to define. I guess when you ask uh, any Javanese or any Indonesians and you ask them, so what do you think is the problem of Java? I think most likely they would have difficulty in answering that question in a very straightforward way. Uh, I think there are many things. So there are environmental problems, there are economic problems, social economic uh, polaris polarizations, infrastructure, so on and so forth. And to make it uh, more complex, uh, all of these problems, they are tangled and tangled. So I think it's very, very difficult to, to define it, to unpack the problems. So Java is, uh, as we mentioned, the main, the most populated island in Indonesia. And the history of Indonesia is uh, quite complicated and interesting, but uh, Java has developed in the way it has due to this long-standing colonial legacy of the, the Dutch. So um, what does this mean for how the infrastructure in Java has uh, set the island up on a certain development path? And how do you change those trajectories? Yes. So I think Java is what it is now is because, as you said, it's the long-standing colonial history. Uh, the biggest colonial port in Indonesia at the time was in Batavia, which is uh, nowadays Jakarta. And it is there because it has a very, very strategic location in uh, the whole Malay Strait and also in the Indonesian Sea. And it is also there because uh, Java Island hosted so many different uh, cr cr cash crops, uh, plantations, coffee, sugar, and tea at that time. So there are so many uh, infrastructure development being done at the moment by the Dutch. Um, mainly they are there because they need the inf infrastructure to extract this uh, yield of the, the, the cash crops and bring it to Europe. And because of the existing of this uh, infrastructure, I think it kind of um, perpetuated the whole pattern of development. The infrastructure is there, so then it attracts more development and then it brings uh, more employment and growth. And again, it will 
uh, keep continue growing and growing and growing while on the other part of Indonesia because there are not enough infrastructure then it doesn't really attract economic activities and therefore also a limited mm. growth. So we're talking now about these port cities of uh, Jakarta, Semarang and also Surabaya as yes. major port cities along the north coast. So this has led to what you're saying is kind of an imbalance between mm. these two parts of Java mm. and the uh, prioritization away from the hinterland of, yes. of the island. Yes. Yeah, basically, uh, so when we talk about this imbalance of development uh, in Java or in Indonesia in that sense that uh, we already see that there is an imbalance because everything is concentrated in Java Island. And on Java Island itself, there is this disparity between the development on the northern coast area and also the southern coastal area. And is this uh, trend, this is something that's... Um, so it has a very long legacy. I mean, we're talking 100, 200 years mm -hmm. since uh, European colonization started, but also in the independence period, the initial couple decades uh, uh, under Sukarno and then Suharto, this also involved a centralization of power, right, in, jo in Java and also in, in the capital. Um, so that also led to more uh, kind of increasing centralization, is that right? Yes, that's, that's correct, because uh, right after the independence, uh, we have this uh, big spike of a uh, population explosion uh, mm -hmm. around Java, and uh, Jakarta at the time was, uh, uh, what is it, uh, allocated as the capital of the country. So then again, it keeps uh, perpetuating the old pattern, because before Java is the colonial capital, and now Jakarta is the new uh, capital of the Republic of Indonesia. And at the time, right after the independence, people are very poor. And then at the time, the agriculture productivity is not very well in the rural area. So there are many, many people coming to the city from the rural area to Jakarta region at that time. So if you see the graph of population growth in Jakarta, it's, uh, it's really quite amazing that you can see a very, very big jump of population, maybe around the 70s. Mm. And until now, Jak Jakarta is still the most populated uh, city in Indonesia, mm. even though the growth is slowing, but it's still right. the biggest uh, city. Right. But the government has new plans to uh, relocate or even build a new capital outside of Java. So this is something that will have a huge impact on the island and the whole country. Yes, uh, definitely. So the whole idea about moving the capital to the other line, uh, the other island, uh, in this case to Borneo, has been discussed uh, for a long time. So it's not really a surprise for uh, Indonesia. Mm. It has been discussed since the time of Sukarno at that time, because okay. he already seen at that time that the pattern of uh, population uh, growth and economic growth is not very balanced. Mm. And he also forecasted that uh, Jakarta might not be feasible anymore as the capital city in many decades to come. Mm. Due to sinking and sea level rise already anticipated yes. at that point? Yeah, or? and okay. at the time it's also about the carrying capacity of yeah. the, uh, Jakarta itself. Yeah. So they were already talking about that time. So it's very interesting that now that uh, Jokowi, uh, our uh, current president, that right after he's being elected and immediately he said the new plan is, is uh, b basically happening. I mean, the capital is moving. So this is something yeah. that is imminent and in, in the short term, people expect it to happen. It's not just talk, it's, it's actually... It seems that it's going to happen this time. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess if it really happens, it's going to change uh, a lot the, the pattern of development of, of Java Island. I'm not going to say that Java finally is not going to be so populated anymore because I think that's uh, quite uh, unreal to say that. Right. But to some extent, since uh, many of the administrative activities will move to Borneo, and you could imagine that uh, there will be a big uh, bulk of the civil servant uh, population will have to move to the mm. new capital mm. along with their uh, families, perhaps. So you could see that there is also a big movement to, to Borneo. Right. Uh, but I'm not quite sure actually to what extent that this uh, movement will uh, really impact it the the whole demography right. uh, situation of ja Jakarta. Right. Yeah. So cities in Java and perhaps across Indonesia are rethinking their, their economic role and mm -hmm. this maybe presents an opportunity for Jakarta to uh, reposition itself, mm -hmm. prioritizing certain sectors, finance. Mm -hmm. um, that also presents opportunities for other cities, perhaps, to think about other areas, other innovative industries. Mm -hmm. um, so are these some of the things that uh, the charrettes intended to discuss? Yes, yeah, so this is one aspect of that because, uh, okay, if when the capital is relocated, that really gives us a 
a new opportunity to really rethink about Java, as you said, right? Uh, this is a, quite a determining factor because it's, it's quite real, it's happening. And the thing is, uh, of course, we can not only think about Jakarta because uh, Java is more than Jakarta region. I mean, it spans from uh, 1,000 kilometers from the west and to the east. There are many different cities, uh, tertiary villages, and also uh, much smaller uh, mm. villages, uh, rural area. So I guess the whole uh, consolation of the settlement system is, is quite diverse. Mm. So Jakarta is only one part of it. Right. So I think if we want to think about the development of Java in a more holistic way, we also have to look at the trajectory of the development of mm. this different type of uh, settlements or right. cities. And it's a unique uh, landscape. There have been numerous studies in urban planning, uh, most notably this Terry McGee, uh, who coined this term of the Desakota region, which means uh, an area that's not quite urban or rural, but it's a mix of both. It's a hybrid. So Java represents a kind of territory which has a lot of agricultural production mm -hmm. alongside high-density settlements. So these areas present a, a risk maybe, but also a challenge, an opportunity to think about new modes of development, new modes of urbanization. Um, so rice agriculture may, remains a kind of vital source of, um, of income for people. Um, so that those are some of the things that you would balance, right, in terms of yeah. how this development would, would occur. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest problems in Java, as we talked about before, that it is uh, has the highest uh, population concentration in whole Indonesia, but it's also one of the biggest rice producers in Indonesia. Though. So in itself, there is a dilemma of uh, land use, whether it should be used for human settlement or agriculture. Okay. So at the moment, maybe it's still okay. We don't really have a food uh, shortage in, in Java. But I think if we, we let, uh, you know, things happening business as usual I mean you'll never know maybe there will not enough land for right. agriculture anymore right. so we really have to think about it in a more proactive way and I guess the charrette is uh, one platform to to rethink about what kind of uh, settlement system that we are looking at for Java 50 years from now so how do we integrate uh, the need for uh, uh, a good uh, agricultural productivity as well as a more uh, livable uh, urban settlements for for the population. What is this? They're buffers. So there are buffers around each of the volcanoes. So that's corresponding to these governance, uh -huh. like volcano-based governance around the, So it's showing the water set. So you're saying so that kind of every volcano will have like its own like guardian? Yeah, like it's own. Have, like, a, yeah. So they are the voice of this like volcano ecosystem. Yeah. So one of the interesting things about Java is that it's a volcanic island, there are numerous active volcanoes, and the geology of the island has been shaped primarily through these uh, volcanoes and its position on the ring of fire. And this seems like a, a risk in a way, but it also offers a potential, right? Yes, uh, it's interesting you mentioned that because uh, during the charrette we were trying to project how Java would look like in 50 years from now and everybody's saying like, oh, Java is sinking, air pollution is uh, going to be worse, uh, biodiversity is collapsing and it's all very, very gloom future. But of course, uh, we also recognize there are some uh, potentialities of Java and volcanoes is uh, basically is one of that. And volcano for many Japanese is not really a bad thing because, okay, it erupts from time to time, but they also give life. Mm. They make the soil very fertile right. and it also shape our culture and history. And, uh, and one more technical aspect of that is that the volcanoes uh, provide us this really amazing source of a clean source of a renewable en energy. Right. So at the moment, I think uh, the electricity generation on Java Island still rely too much on the coal, uh, basically because it's very cheap to make. And then also, of course, there are some vested interests of certain parties. So that's why coal is still the main thing, yeah. which is quite ridiculous because we have enough volcanoes to really, you know, provide energy the for the whole Indonesia. Yeah, the geothermal. Right. Yeah, for the whole of Indonesia. So that's definitely something that we have to tap on. So the groups at the Shred are also thinking about strategies to leverage the volcanoes as a kind of network um, mm -hmm. for the island and conserve as an open space spine, but also as a productive um, system. Mm. Mm. Yes, yes. I think it's a very interesting idea. So the, as you mentioned, at one team, they were looking at the volcano-based uh, settlement systems, right? 
So they could uh, change character in terms, uh, in the case of a volcano eruption, and when the volcano is quite calm, mm. they can also work on a different uh, dynamic. Mm. I thought it was very, very creative for this group <laughs> to really think about it. And that really also uh, kind of emphasizes that the volcano is a good thing as long as you can uh, learn how to live uh, with it and following the, mm. the rhythm of the nature. Right. So it's not something that they have to fight against, right. but it's something that we really should adapt to. Indonesian envoy for climate change. Is it the envoy for the island? Or no, no, envoy national envoy, national envoy. Okay. for climate change. For climate change, and we propose an envoy for the island. Envoy. And then below that, I think should be for volcano stewards or something. Yeah, climate change, volcano and river. Volcano, so it's and river volcano, volcano based communities. Yeah. So we are building the commitment and the consensus. The consensus. So the charrette was organized uh, here at Future Cities Lab and uh, brought together people from both in Singapore and outside, right, to come and discuss the future. And some of these people had quite a bit of experience actually working on these issues in Indonesia. Yes. We, we did have uh, over 30 partic participants coming for the charrette. And there are uh, many of them are uh, native Japanese, so that's quite uh, incredible to have the local insights. And they also have uh, people from Europe as well as from Singapore. And they're coming from a really diverse uh, multidisciplinary background. So we have economists, we have computer scientists, we have ecologists, planners, architects, and so on and so forth. And they are very different from one another, but they do share one thing in common they do share uh, a sense of urgency. Should we also visualize the clusters here? Like how they are integrated with one another? The way. Should we put it here? Oh, yes. I think we have to separate and then we will have three seats of it. Our visualization of how it works in the end of 2045. Some of the groups discussed new ways of rethinking Indonesia's energy strategy based on geothermal energy from Java's volcanoes, while other groups discussed ways of actually giving ecological features, such as rivers and volcanoes, a voice in parliament. These groups debated how to implement their proposals as well, considering how the political landscape of Indonesia will change both in the short term, in the next term of uh, Joko Widodo, but also looking forward to 2070. Dr. Hendrikus Andi Samarmata is vice chairman of the Center for Urban and Regional Studies at the University of Indonesia in Jakarta. He's joined us for the charrette and today discusses how the activities of the charrette uh, have informed his thinking about different solutions to Indonesia's urban challenges. So how did you find out about this charrette event which we had at Future Cities Lab? Yeah, uh, I think last year when I w uh, worked for the ADB project in Metropolitan Palembang, I met uh, Stephen and also uh, Sari, and uh, we are develop. We were developing at that time uh, uh, to implement the Urscape model for uh, assessing uh, metropolitan area, okay. uh, and then uh, we keep. Uh, building communication, try to give uh, some idea, proposal to our government, okay. Minister of Special Spending, and then I think this is also one good uh, idea to have uh, Java predictions to 2070, and then I'll, of, of course I, I'm pleased to uh, share what uh, my thought and my knowledge so far. Right. So Java, as uh, some people may not know, is the largest city, mm. largest sorry, largest mm. uh, island in mm. Indonesia and uh, heavily populated, mm. um, and it's it's still rapidly uh, mm. urbanizing and developing. Mm. So right now the uh, island is split into several provinces mm. and, and many cities. So mm. the the issue of how do you coordinate development across this yeah. very complex region, mm. um, that's what you're working on, and yeah. that was the question for the charrette. So yeah. are there things that uh, came up in this event that were you felt were uh, interesting or relevant mm. To, mm. to think about going forward? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, to some uh, extent, yeah, most of our research uh, focuses only in the metropolitan scale mm. and not so much uh, uh, researchers think about how the ecosystem for the metropolitan can grow. Okay. And I think the island of Java is uh, the best uh, approach. How do you think 
that uh, th those uh, phenomenon of rapid urbanization can happen. Although we face some uh, challenges in environmental, in our biodiversity mm -hmm. uh, status, and of course in population itself, yeah, mm -hmm. because uh, Java uh, not only uh, has a positive growth in uh, uh, natural uh, population, but also the migration mm. in in uh, from, from other, other islands. Other yeah. islands. Yeah. So that's also the most uh, uh, challenges. Right. How to reduce the sugar, uh, right. the, the attractiveness of the Java. So right now, um, you're working on mm. national level strategies. Mm. So are there any things that are going to be changing in terms of how the national government approaches spatial planning? Yes. In the next, uh, this is a good time, a good momentum, because now we are preparing our midterm development plan for okay. the next five years. The new president, uh, not the new one, but the elected president will right. uh, in a, will be inaugurated on the October. Okay. So it's a good time. Uh, so the technocratic um, uh, paper uh, said that in the next five years we will build uh, we will build a um, seven metropolitan area outside of Java. Mm. So there are uh, a huge uh, energy to. Uh, transfer the, the development concentration to out, outside of Java. Right. Second one is uh, try to improve the connectivity within the Java. It's not uh, the purpose to attract more people, but to make uh, more livable for mm. the Javanese itself. Okay. The third one is uh, also uh, the moving uh, capital to outside of Java. And then the spatial planning uh, s uh, need to be revised in the ne in this year and the next year. Okay. So we hope that we will have a new president regulation of Java Island, uh, spatial planning of Java Island in the next year. Okay. Great. So are there things that, that came out today, particularly in the presentations, that you will maybe uh, think about? or? Yeah, or yeah I, I, I'm very interested to uh, many thoughts that uh, uh, are running in our charrette, mm. especially uh, I think most of our group uh, think about the importance of and urgency of the ecological and environmental uh, intervention for Java, not much talk about the future of cities itself in, in terms of the physical mm. construction, mm. in terms of the high-tech building and so on, like in the Western mm. uh, 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 civilization. Mm. The local wisdom come up, uh, how the cultural uh, connectivity come up, uh, the landscape, for example, of the eruption uh, uh, mountain, uh, ring of fire also right. come up. I think it's uh, show that uh, some of the group here uh, thinks that the key uh, sector to uh, develop a future, better future for Java is uh, focus on not only for the building modern cities, but also rely on the uh, environmental and social itself. Right, the existing and, uh, fabric, social and cultural correct. fabric in Java. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I like, I think it is a good step uh, to wrap up the the thought into several concepts and then mm. I think we can take uh, further because I also work for Indonesian Association of Urban and Regional Planner. I think we can uh, uh, take it as a starting point to be more uh, uh, narrow, narrowing down right. to to the each uh, uh, of our uh, chapters in, in Java Island. Okay. And yeah, thanks for inviting <laughs> me for FCL and I hope that we can uh, continue the collaboration. Maybe not here, maybe in Jakarta, in yeah. Semarang or Surabaya. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming by. It's yeah. a pleasure talking to you.